Hi, welcome to Barker Canine Academy. Today I want to talk to you about thunderstorm anxiety with your dogs. So with thunderstorm anxiety, the biggest key that I want to get across is it's all about trying to keep your fur baby under their threshold. This is a very, very common issue in dogs. So 30 out of 32 dogs suffer from thunderstorm anxiety. That's a lot. So your dog is, is normal, okay? It's not a big deal if um, he or she has some thunderstorm anxiety. So we're gonna kind of give you some help with that, okay? So what to keep in mind when working with a dog with thunderstorm anxiety? So the first thing is, is there's no cookie cutter way to do dog training. There's no particular way that works for every single dog. So a lot of times when we're just starting to work with thunderstorm anxiety, sometimes it's a hit or miss. Sometimes we find something that works and sometimes not so much. And sometimes it's just a matter of working through those issues before we find what really works. Another thing that I want to bring up with that is getting some basic obedient training while working with thunderstorm anxiety can be very beneficial because that builds up your dog's confidence and once they're more confident, they're less likely to be as anxious just in general. So that's something that I would really encourage you to do this in combination with, okay? Another thing to keep in mind when working with your dog with thunderstorm anxiety is this can take months to years to never being fully resolved. And sometimes with some dogs, they get over it with the desensitization and the other things that we're gonna talk about fairly quickly and it's resolved, especially if we're building the confidence with it. Other dogs, it takes years of working with them, and some dogs just never fully get over it. And then we just take what we're working on, the desensitization, and we'll continue to work with that. And um, I'll give you some other pointers as we go on on how that we can really team up and just keep them under their threshold. Okay. What causes thunderstorm anxiety in dogs. So there's a lot of different theories on this and there's nothing that's like concrete on what the cause is. So it's many different factors and it's a, just like a lot of things with our dogs, it's unknown. They can't talk to us, they can't tell us what's going on. So us as, as dog trainers, behavior consultants, your veterinarians have all come together to come up with these these simple things that we think can be causing thunderstorm anxiety. So the causes are static electricity builds up in the environment during a thunderstorm. Um, and so that static electricity can actually build underneath your pet's fur. And so when they move, it can cause a shock, much like if you drag your feet on the carpet and then you go touch your friend and then you're gonna get you know, shocked. We've all been there, we've all done it at least once. The other one is the loud startling noises of a thunderstorm. So you have the thunder itself, you have the sound of the rain. If there's hail, that changes it. You also have the sound of the wind and all that can be very, very scary and startling to a dog. The thunder is rattling um, the house. So if it's rattling the windows, the dog's most likely feeling that in the floor through their feet. That can be very unsettling. It's dark outside when it's supposed to be light. Everything just kind of gets like haywire, like, hey, what's going on here? And then the last point is a negative experience. So if they have had one negative experience during a thunderstorm or cause of a thunderstorm, they can link that and that can be a trigger. Um, if you watched my last video about uh, dog aggression, it's, it's kind of like that. It's, they have experienced something that has caused a trigger and the thunderstorm is that trigger. So what are some things that we can do to help with thunderstorm anxiety. 
So one of the things that we can do is called desensitization. Um, you do want to make sure that you follow this even if it doesn't seem like it's making a difference because even though it doesn't appear like it's making a difference, it's making a difference. So I get a lot of uh, my clients that we're working through their dogs, thunderstorm anxiety. And my first question to them is, are you continuing to do your thunderstorm um, desensitization? And a lot of them will say, well, no, I didn't really feel like it was working. So I, I just stopped doing that. And then once we start doing that again, my next session I'll be like okay so we've started doing the desensitization again how is that going are we seeing a difference and you're like yeah you know I am actually seeing a difference but it's funny because when we're actually doing it he doesn't seem to be bothered by it but it is making a difference this is why it's desensitization we don't necessarily want to see a response we're getting them used to hearing a thunderstorm. So let me tell you how we do the desensitization. So just for fair warning, a lot of times I recommend using um, devices that start with an A or an G. So I will be saying those. So if you happen to have one of those devices, um, just beware, I'm going to be saying it. Um, so a lot of times I recommend um, using an Alexa or Google device and ask them to play the sound of a thunderstorm. Alexa, play the sound of a thunderstorm. Okay, here's sleep sounds, thunderstorm sounds. Okay, Google, play the sound of a thunderstorm. Here's what a thunderstorm sounds like. We're going to start at a very low volume and then we're going to play that sound of a thunderstorm for five minutes. The next day, we're going to play it, increase the volume a little bit more until we can get it at full volume for that entire five minutes. Now the key to this is that you have to watch your dog's body language to make sure that they're under their threshold. If we push them over their threshold, then we need to decrease the volume again. And it's all about what works for your pet. So if, it's, if they're under their threshold, we can go ahead and go all the way up to full volume, play it for five minutes. Then after we have done that, we're going to increase the time to 10 minutes. But if we're increasing the time, we're gonna decrease the volume and we're gonna go back to the lowest volume and go keep playing it for 10 minutes and increasing the volume until we can play it at full volume. And then we're gonna keep doing that in five minute increments until we can play it at full volume for one hour. Once you have done that, you're not done with desensitization. You want to continue to do that. You can play it for an hour at full volume one week, the next week try doing 50%, and you change the volume in, up and down, playing it for one hour each day. And the reason for that is because we have to keep it sporadic because some storms are louder than others. So now we've got them where to they're more desensitized to the sound now we have to keep that up in order for it to help keep them under the threshold when a real storm occurs. The other thing that I want to address on what we can do to help our, our babies with their thunderstorm anxiety is to help alleviate that static electricity in their fur, use a dryer sheet. Take a dryer sheet, rub it all over them, and that is going to remove the static. It's gonna prevent the static electricity from building. That's what a dryer sheet does for our laundry. It helps prevent that static electricity, and it's gonna do the same thing in the pet of our, or in the fur on our pet, okay? Um, Another thing that we should keep in mind when dealing with uh, thunderstorm anxiety is again, we wanna keep them under their threshold. So 
in order to do that, there are over-the-counter medication that you can get, um, such as Quiet Moments. I really like that. I mean, just any, anything that has melatonin in it can, will really help with that. It just kind of helps keep them on their threshold. Now, this works for some pets, but some pets require a little bit more than what you can get over the counter. It is key that you talk to your veterinarian about it. They can give you um, prescription uh, medications that can help keep them under that threshold that are stronger than quiet moments or melatonin. Um, but it's very important that your veterinarian knows that there is an issue. Another thing that I always recommend doing is making a safe place. So a safe place can be as simple as a crate with a blanket over it so it's more like a den, it's more enclosed, they feel safe. Some people just simply are able to put their dogs in a certain bathroom or their bedroom, somewhere that is safe for them that they know that they can go. If a thunderstorm happens, this is the safe place they can go there and not be bothered. That's their safe place. One recommendation that I would also make to you is to use Adaptil. Adaptil is a hormone um, spray and it's a hormone that mother dogs release to help calm their puppies and make them feel comfortable, safe, and relaxed. So getting an Adaptil product, they have collars, they have spray, they have infusers. Using those when we know that a thunderstorm is coming in or going to happen can help keep them under that threshold. It's just that added comfort that says, okay, you know, this is all right. So my last thing that I would say with this is you could try a thunder coat or a thunder shirt. Some, like 50% of people say, oh my gosh, I love the thunder shirt. It has made a world of difference. And other people are like, I hate the thunder shirt. It doesn't do anything. But I do think it's worth trying. For the 50% that it works for, it works fantastic. The only other thing that I would add to this video is when dealing with anxiety, it is very important that you work with a dog trainer or a behavior consultant to help you with this because there is no cookie cutter way to do anxiety or dog training in general. Um, but when it comes to anxiety, it, it doesn't take much for a trigger to happen and having a dog trainer your, or a behavior consultant and a veterinarian involved, we can kind of help work with that. You're not alone. 30 out of 32 dogs have thunderstorm anxiety. This is normal. If you liked that video, please hit the thumbs up. Hit that bell to subscribe so that you can see more videos like this. And I really want to see your comments. I'm all about helping you. That's what I'm here for. Thank you so much for tuning in to Barker Canine Academy. I really look forward to seeing you in my next video.